The other day I was driving home. I just so happened to be recording a, a video for sisters talking about self-discipline, nurture, womanhood, etc. And I noticed a van kept pulling up beside my window. Now, I tried to ignore it because, you know, there's a lot going on in the UK right now. There's a lot going on in the world right now. So I wasn't really looking to get into any looks or to be entertaining any inappropriate or belittling or bigoted comments. No, it was a sunny day in Scotland that day, so I had sunglasses on and I was wearing very similar to what I'm wearing right now. So very different to what you see in Scotland. Even within the Muslim community, there are not many niqabis and it's definitely not the norm walking around, right? No, at some point I had clocked the older gentleman's face. He didn't look right. I, I was actually concerned because he looked in a real state of shock. And this is what happened. The fear, for example. Firstly, you're able to see the type of person. You alright? You okay? You alright? Hi. I'm no usual, yeah. I'm not the usual. <laughs> it's the truth, I swear. It's the truth, I promise. Islam. It is, I promise. Just. Before you judge, just look into it. I did, 20 years. For those me, I went tent for my side. I really have spent a long time studying. He was me. No, he was me, but he did come with the same message as Jesus. We believe in Jesus. He was. He never wrote it seven times. There was seven, seven dialects. Like Irish and Scottish, like this. I promise, but nice to First see. of all, may Allah guide him and all of us to the truth. I mean, you know, we have to keep in mind that not everybody who is in shock, not everybody who questions, not everybody who disagrees is necessarily coming from a malice place or coming from a place of hate in their heart. Sometimes it's just genuine concern for a person and that we can relate to, right? People have been fed a narrative about Islam, have been fed a narrative about uh, hijab have been fed a narrative about women in Islam and when they see it in real life and it's so opposite to what they know I imagine that genuine concern comes with that and you know it really is for the Muslim to think ahead it really is for the Muslim due to the access to knowledge due to recognition of God seeing the bigger picture is for us to take these things into consideration you know, when we interact with people, getting into a discourse with them isn't about humiliating the other person. It isn't about winning a conversation. It isn't about saying, oh, I've found the guidance, but you have nay. Like, it seems like a lot of the discourse that goes on is more about massaging a person's ego, is more about winning than it is for the sake of the person that you're having a conversation with. Like, we have to keep in mind, when we look at the Sira in the early days of the Revelation, there were people who turned out to be some of the most respected Sahaba and companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But initially in the beginning, the way they opposed and oppressed the Muslims is far worse than some of the people that we walk and live beside, you know? Conveying the message is a duty and where that comes a character and comes an awareness and comes a certain calibre of knowledge to know that the bigger picture is that soul. Those are real people. I think this is definitely the thing I don't like about social media. It is really putting the sincerity of people to the test. And subhanAllah, there's this phenomena of where people who started off by looking like they were sincere, who really held themselves accountable in regards to staying within the boundaries of Islam, you know, holding themselves accountable in terms of things they get wrong, just how they move and communicate online. Like that's starting to change for some people, subhanAllah. And may Allah guide us all, because we're all at risk of that, right? That's for us to constantly look at ourselves and look at our character, reminding ourselves of our station. We're reminding ourselves that we really technically are no one in this world. We are nothing more than a speck of sand in a beach. That the only one worthy of worship is Allah. The guidance comes from him, not from us. That we are merely tools in this world. Tools to look after our loved ones, tools to convey the message. Anyway, may Allah Azawajal guide us all, allow us all to increase our knowledge, to implement that knowledge and to share that knowledge appropriately. Allow us to be successful in this world and the next, to keep us on the right path. 
the path of his pleasure. Amen.